Hi, and welcome to Culture Moves. Today in this tutorial, you will learn a bit about the Culture Move tools that have been developed in the project. Let's dig into this. Here in the Culture Moves website, you can access the portal of Culture Moves. This is where you'll find the three tools that have been developed. Moves Collects Browser Plugin, Moves Scrapbook, and the Motion Notes Annotator. Moves Collect and Moves Scrapbook are subject to a different tutorial. In this one, we'll focus in the Motion Notes Annotator. Let's get started. Motion Notes is a multi-platform web-based video annotator to support multi-model annotation that can be applied to several working areas where the performance of human body movements is at stake, such as dance rehearsals, theatre and sports, for example. This tool was designed to assist the creative and exploratory processes of both professional and amateur users. This beta version has been developed for any device capable of running in a modern web browser. It is a real-time multi-model video annotator based on keyboard, touch and voice inputs. Five different ways of adding annotations have been already implemented. Voice, drawing, text, web URL and mark annotations. Here's how it works. By following the link, you will arrive at the Motion Notes introductory page, where you can find a brief explanation of the tool and an image of the user interface and main features. In the application header, you will also find the Help menu, where you can find the link for this YouTube tutorial. This menu is always available throughout the application, so you can check it out and review it whenever you need. In order to access the application, you need to have an account and access credentials. The videos and annotations created by you will only be accessible with this account. There are some sharing options, but we'll look into this later on. So, if you don't have any credentials yet, then you need to sign up. For this, just follow the sign up link, available in the application at the top right side, and you will reach the registration page. Here you'll have to fill in some personal information, like name, email address, and any password of your choice, which you will have to enter twice. Please note the email address must be unique, meaning it won't be possible to have two accounts linked to the same email address. Note also that for now this email address is used solely for account management purposes, like logging or in case you forget your password. Additionally, you will also have to agree to the terms and conditions, which we encourage you to read. And finally, back in the registration form, you will also need to enter the characters shown in the image. All fields are mandatory, so if you're all done, click register, a success message will be displayed and you'll be able to go to the login page. In order to access the application, you'll have to enter your credentials, email and password. If you don't have any credentials yet, then you need to sign up by following the link Create New Account at the bottom of the login form or on the sign up link in the application header top right. If needed, check out the previous chapter of this tutorial for more details. If you already have an account but don't remember your password, you can also reset it by following the link Forgot Password. This link will take you to another form where you'll have to enter your email and click Send. You will receive an email on your inbox and by following the link therein, you'll be taken to a new page to reset your password. When done, you are all set to log in to Motion Notes. So, back in the login page, after entering your credentials and clicking on the login button, you will access the annotator's main screen. Please note that each login session has a fixed duration of 4 hours. After this time, if you don't explicitly log out, you will be logged out automatically and will have to log in again. In the Motion Notes main screen, you will find the application header, with several menu items, which we will explore later. Logged in user information, which gives you coach information and also the logout button. At the center of the screen, you will find the video area annotation tools on the left and on the right, annotation editing tools and other tools, also called toolets. Right below the video, you will find the video controls. And finally, the annotations track area with a track for each annotation type. This is where a representation of the video annotations will be displayed. 
If desired, in order to gain more screen space, you have also the possibility to visualize the application in full screen. By selecting the option View, enter full screen. To get back to normal screen, just go again to View and select the Exit full screen option. You have also the possibility to hide the tools in Toolits by going again to the View menu and deselecting the corresponding options. In the very beginning, the account will be empty, with no videos to work on. So in order to start using the tool, there are three options. The first one is by importing a video, which must be available in your device. You can also record a new video using the Motion Notes application. And finally, you can also replay a YouTube or Move Scrapbook video simply by providing the corresponding URL. Vimeo videos are not supported. Let's start by exploring the Video Import option. In order to import an existing video, we need to go to the File menu and select the Import Video option. Once you click on this option, a standard file dialog window will appear and you will be able to browse the files and folders on your device. The supported video formats include MP4, WebM and OGG. So you just need to go to the video directory, select the video and click Open. Depending on your net Network speed and file size, this import action may take a few moments. The screen will be blocked while the operation is in progress. When the import is complete, a message will appear informing you about it. You can see the video was automatically selected, so you can immediately start working on it. The imported video will also be listed in the available videos window, which you can access by clicking on the selected video. or by going to File, Available Videos option. Another way to create videos to work on, and in this particular case also annotate in real time, is to record your own videos using the Motion Notes tool. For this, you need to have at least one camera connected to your device. In case you have more than one camera, you can configure which camera will be considered as camera 1 or camera 2 by going to settings, devices and here in the video device you will select camera 1. I will keep my well, laptop camera selected. Before start recording I can then change which camera I will be using, camera 1 or camera 2. Note how the icon changes there. I will keep camera 1 and go on a quick test. So I'm using my laptop camera. However, if I switch to the second camera, then it will be using the other camera. Naturally, you also need to have at least one microphone and speaker connected to your device. Again, on the settings devices, you can configure which device you will be using. Regarding the quality of the recording, you can also choose some parameters in the settings and codings menu. Resolution, frame rate and bitrate. The combination of these parameters will impact the quality and also the size of the recorded file. If you're not familiar with these settings, we suggest leaving the default parameters and to further check in the internet for explanations. To start recording, you just need to click on the record button. Notice how the icon turns red to indicate the recording has started. By default, the video is recorded in continuous mode, so it's displayed to you at the same time the image is being captured. While recording in normal mode, and only this mode, meaning it will not work, for example, in delayed mode, which we'll show later, you can switch to suspended mode. Once you, this mode allows you to capture the current frame and annotate it as long as you want, while the video continues to be captured. Once you complete the frame annotation and choose again the normal mode, then the display of the video being recorded is resumed. However, if you start recording in delayed mode, by clicking 
on the record mode button and selecting delayed. The video will also start being recorded immediately once you click the record button. But the image will be displayed only 5 seconds after. This will allow the user to have some extra time to react and annotate without losing any information from the scene being recorded. Under the settings preferences, you will be able to choose this delay time. By default, it's set to 5 seconds, but you can change it from 1 to 10 seconds. During the recording, while the video is saved on the server, the video name will automatically be selected. So you can replay it right after and continue working on it. Besides video import and recording, Motion Notes also allows you to select and annotate YouTube or move scrapbook videos. In this case, it's important to take into account the copyrights of the video selected. Motion Notes cannot be held responsible for any unfair usage of the selected videos or violation of any protected rights. Also note that no YouTube or move scrapbook videos are stored on our service, only the related annotation files created by you. Having said this, in order to select a YouTube video, you just need to go to YouTube, copy the video URL from here or here, then go to File, External URL, and paste the YouTube URL selected. And your YouTube video is now ready to be played and edited. Similarly, for move scrapbook videos, you just also need to select the same option, file external URL, and enter the move scrapbook video URL here. This URL can be obtained from your move scrapbook area, either from an already created collection or from content you have already imported. And for the video that you want to import, you go to the Actions and select the copy link. The link will be copied to the clipboard and you can now paste it in Motion Notes. External videos that have been replayed and annotated are also listed in the file Available Videos dialog under the external URL tab, so you can pick them up later to continue working on them. Let's look into more detail at the Available Videos dialog. As mentioned earlier on this tutorial, in this dialog you'll find two tabs, Recorded or Imported and External URL, where you'll see a listing of the videos you have already worked on. You are also able to select one of the videos, and only one, and after clicking Open, you'll be able to replay and annotate it. Same happens, of course, for external videos. Let's take this one, for example, select it and play it. As you see, previously recorded annotations are also loaded. If we go back to the Available Videos dialog, you will also find some additional features for now only available for the recording imported videos. You can, for example, rename a video by selecting that video and only that one, clicking Rename and then entering the respective new name. For example, first imported video. Click Enter. You can also delete videos, only one, several, or all, by selecting them and then clicking on the delete button. Please note that no confirmation is asked when you click delete. This operation is not reversible, so please use it carefully. So now that we have several videos to work with, let's check how to interact with them.
Motion Notes provides the standard playback video controls which allow you to play, pause, and stop a selected video. Spacebar can also be used to start and pause a video. Regarding the video's replay, under Settings Preferences, you'll also find some related options. Keep Aspect Ratio, selected by default, and Mirror Video Image, which, if enabled, will mirror the video image being shown to you. For example, Please note, this option can be selected also while recording a video, and while recording, you will see the video image mirrored. However, because this is simply a replay option, the video itself is still being recorded, captured in the usual camera perspective, meaning not mirrored. Additionally, the following video controls are also available. Play the video in loop, in other words, restart replay instantly after ending. Classic volume slider controls. And replay speed, where one corresponds to the video normal speed, 0 0.25 quarter of speed, half speed, and double speed. The video timeline in the middle displays the video playing progress and shows also the current video time and total time. By clicking on any point of the timeline or by dragging the cursor, you can jump in time to any other moment of the video. This video search feature is also possible by clicking on the annotation tracks below or dragging the timeline cursor. Buttons Previous and Next Annotation allow you to jump between annotations, but this will be shown in more detail ahead after we create annotations. Let's do it! While recording or playing a video, or also on pause, users have the possibility to create annotations directly on top of the displayed video. Five different annotation types are supported. Draw, Text, Audio, Link, and mark. To start annotating, simply click on the intended annotation type, select or change any of the related properties using the editing tools on the right, and you're ready to annotate your video. But let's check this in more detail for each type. Draw annotations allow you to sketch with the mouse, finger or touch pen over the displayed video giving you more freedom in the annotation process. It is basically a set of timed ink strokes with spatial temporal dimensions. These annotations can be created with any chosen color or line style. For example, Text annotations can be made using a physical or virtual keyboard. This kind of input method gives the opportunity to write regular text over the video. To create text annotations, simply click on top of the video, write some text, and press Enter. Text color and size can also be chosen beforehand. Audio annotations allow sound recording using a connected microphone. A sound file is produced for each annotation made and it's totally independent of the video audio. Once you click the audio annotation button, it will start blinking, meaning the sound is already being captured. When the button is clicked again, the audio recording and the annotation ends. will start blinking, meaning the sound is already being captured. When the button is clicked again,
URL annotations are similar to text annotations and are created in the exact same way. The idea, however, is to enter some URL to link when you click to another website. Moreover, if the link points to a YouTube, Vimeo or an image, then a preview thumbnail is also shown when moving the cursor over the link. For example, let's try with this Vimeo video. Create the annotation. When the cursor is over the link, we see a preview. When you click, of course, the link is open in a new tab. Similar for images. We also see a preview of the image. Regarding video links and the autoplay parameter, please note this is part of the current YouTube and Vimeo application programming interfaces, meaning it could change. If it doesn't work as expected, please check YouTube or Vimeo documentation for this. Similarly to text annotations, all link annotations, color and size can also be set before creation. Mark annotations serve the purpose of a quick annotation, which can be particularly useful during real-time annotation. Each mark represents some meaning predefined by the user in the marks management window accessible from the settings menu, marks, or using this shortcut when no marks have yet been created. Marks are represented by an icon, a chosen color if you wish to use it, and a description. If the color checkbox is unchecked, then the icon will keep its original color. Let's create, for example, this one. Apart from the provided default icons, you can also choose any image available on your device. You just need to click on Custom Image, select the image you want to use, and click Open. The image will be added to the Create New Mark section, and you can then use it to combine with any color or description. Please note the imported mark image and created mark will be shown in this marks management dialog with the same size as the other icons. However, when you use them to create annotations, they are added over the video with their original size. Let's check this. Now that we have created some predefined marks, you can use them on the selected video simply by choosing one mark and clicking on the video to add the mark on that exact same position. You see, in this case, the image is added with its original size. After the annotations are created, we can replay the video and verify the annotations appear and disappear after their display time. During the video replay, but also on pause, you can use the jump to previous and jump to next annotation buttons mentioned before. If you click next, the video will jump forward to the beginning of the next annotation. If you click jump to previous, then the video will jump backwards to the beginning of the previous annotation. As you most likely have already noticed, all annotations created and associated to the selected video are represented on the annotations track. In order to maximize the user experience, this area is placed right below the video area and uses the full screen width. This annotation tracks area is composed of several tracks, each one associated with different annotation types. The position of each annotation on the track corresponds to the time of the video the annotation was created 
and will also become visible in the video. The size of the representation is also proportional to its duration and visibility on screen regarding the video total size. By default, the option View Animate Annotations is not active, meaning the annotations will be rendered immediately. If this option is however selected, Draw Text Annotations will appear on the screen as if they were being drawn or written. Under the menu option View Annotation Tracks, you can also customize the color of the annotation representations. To use the annotation colors in the tracks, you just keep this option selected, already done by default, or if you unselect it, you can choose a specific color for each annotation track. For example, let's put all draw annotations in orange and link annotations in green. We save, and as you see, all draw annotations in orange, the others in grey, and link annotations in green. In the same dialog, you can also choose the track's visibility by clicking on the, the, the icon to make them not visible or visible. Let's hide, for example, draw and text annotation tracks. After the creation, annotations can be selected, so you can edit some of their properties or delete them. The selection of one or more annotations can be performed in the following ways. On the track area, by clicking on the annotations representation, directly on the canvas, if the annotation is currently visible, and after activating the canvas selection, and the third option, in order to select or deselect all annotations, you should go to the edit, select all, or deselect all. After selecting one or more annotations, properties like color, line style, size and position can be changed as well. You can use the corresponding buttons on the right side of the video, color picker, line style, font size, and delete, for example. Let's change the color of these two selected annotations to green. See they changed in the canvas if they're visible and in the tracks area. And to change their position on canvas, you can drag and drop them wherever you want. Duration and start time of annotations can also be edited by drag and dropping or stretching an annotation representation on the tracks area. For example, here I'm incrementing the duration and by moving it and changing the start time. For more precise and also more specific editing options, you can also use the Edit Annotation dialog, which can be accessed by right-clicking on any annotation representation on the track and selecting the Edit option. The following table summarizes all the properties that can be edited and how or where this can be done. For example, in the edit dialog we just talked about, we can see in this table last column that we can edit start time for all annotation types. We can also edit duration for all annotation types except audio. For text and URL annotations we can edit the text or the URL. And additionally, for URL annotations, you can also edit their alias, 
which will be an alternative text that will appear to easily identify the link. Feel free to pause this tutorial in order to analyze in more detail the information contained in this table. From the Edit menu, or using the Copy button, you can copy a set of selected annotations, for example this one, and you can then paste it using again the menu option or the paste button. The selected annotations will be cloned with the exact same properties, including position, so unless you move them, the copy operation will not be noticeable. If you click copy, then select a different set of annotations and click copy again, only the latest selected annotations are stored to be pasted, meaning the initially selected and copied annotations are discarded. For example, let's select this one, click copy, and I'll suppose I want to copy instead this one, I click copy again click paste and only this one, the last set selected, was actually copied. Paste operation works only once, meaning if you click paste a second time, annotations will not be cloned again. Finally, annotation creation and editing operations can be undone and redone using the menu options and do and redo. The supported operations are create, delete, except at least for now all your annotations, edit position, edit start time and duration, edit properties like color, line width, text size, and paste. When any of these operations is performed, the possibility to undo it is available on the edit and do menu. Summary of the operation is also displayed as guidance. Other values could be create annotation, edit properties, paste, etc. So, if I click Undo, the previously operation performed, which was to move that annotation, is undone. Any undone operation can then be redone on the menu Edit, Redo, which will show again a summary of the available operation. The operations are stored in the order of execution so you can use the undo operation several times to undo several operations in the reverse order and similarly you can use the redo operation several times to redo the operations in the original order of execution As mentioned earlier on this tutorial, with the exception of external URL videos, all your work is stored in the Motion Node servers. This includes recorded and imported videos, created annotation files, and imported Marks custom images. All these occupy disk space in the Motion Node server, and because the application is not a final product yet, the total available space is limited. Therefore, each user is allowed to use a limited disk space currently set to 2000 megabytes, approximately 2 gigabytes. As mentioned above as well, you can check the currently available space in the application header menu at any time. The available space is automatically updated. For example, while recording, you can see the occupied space being incremented. Or, if you delete the video we just recorded, disk space that was before 85 megabytes is now back to 84 megabytes. To help you control the available space, whenever your disk quota is close to reaching its limit, which is above 1750 megabytes, a warning message will appear above the video area. If, if this quota is reached, you will also be informed about it, and you will not be able to import, record or create new annotations.
Moreover, if the disk quota is reached while performing any of these operations, they will be interrupted and an error message displayed. But don't worry, in any of these two scenarios, quota almost reached or reached, you have some options in order to be able to continue working with motion nodes. As shown already in this chapter, you can always delete any old or no longer needed videos in the file available videos dialog. And before deleting them, you can also use the export and import project features, which allow you to save and later restore your projects to your device, so you can archive, store them locally. The project export and import features are explained in the next chapter. Let's check them out. In motion notes, the term project refers to a particular video plus its annotations. The video can be recorded, imported, or an external URL. Under the file menu, you will find two project related features export and import. The export option will allow you to store and archive projects locally or even share your work with others. This feature is enabled as long as there's a video or URL already selected and it will generate and save into your device a zip file with the current selected video project information. This zip file will be downloaded to the download folder configured in your browser. Manual manipulation of the zip file and its contents is of course possible, meaning you can open the zip file, explore and change its contents. This manipulation, however, is not recommended, since it could corrupt and break the possibility to import the project back to Mozo Notes later on. In order to import a previously exported project, just need to go to File, Import Project option, enabled as long as there is no other video playing or recording, select a zip project file, let's select the one we exported before, and click Open. The import project process will begin, and when done, you will be informed about it. Annotated videos can also be embedded in another website using an HTML code snippet or simply be shared via link. For this, you just need to go to the embed button placed on the right side of the video, copy the HTML code snippet and paste it in your website. Here's an example of the TKB site where we've prepared beforehand this integration. You see, we see the exact same interface of motion nodes with some customizations, which we'll show later. And the video is played exactly in the same manner and showing the annotations as in motion nodes. To share via link, you can simply click on the Get Shareable Link button, which will copy the link to the clipboard and you can then paste it and send it to your colleagues and friends. Let's paste this in a browser tab so you can get an idea of how, how they will visualize this. As you can see the exact same interface as Motion Notes appears, but only with the video replay buttons. The snippet and share link can also be customized in terms of background and text color to integrate it better with your website, as we saw before in the TKB site. You can also choose to display the annotation tracks or not. And that's it. Thank you for watching this video tutorial and feel free to contact us in case of any additional doubts, issues, suggestions. Your feedback is of the utmost importance. Have fun using Motion Notes.